and down on them, turn my value down on that thing. All right, we live. We live. C Talk. All right, a L- little bit late. Seven Eleven. That's a good convenience store. C Talk stuff to make your C's walk. Um, we got um, we got you know Doctor Doctor Diamond, and we got Precious and Divinity's coming. Uh, we're gonna take some time to tag some people and whatnot. Um, and we got a, a interesting a, a topic. You know, saying on C Talk, it's like you know this whole thing came out. Um, with Dwayne Wade and Gabriel Union's family, and they posted some pictures. And they posted some pictures of um, of their child, you know, kissing, you know, another uh, child. And I think you know, race is definitely, you know, um, you know, of circumstance here. So it's you know, it's just like <laughs> we have to bring up the race. It was a, another white child, and they're both you know, trans young people. And so people were like trying to like skip over the fact that both the, you know, young people are trans and one's white, one's black. I feel like people were ignoring the the trans, you know, interracial uh, elephant in the room. That's what I called it. And then tried to like just skip and try to reduce it to, oh, kids shouldn't be doing that in front of their parents. So we're going to cut to it. We're going to start off that way. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to cut to it and see if like people want to get into comments and whatnot and see if it really is about just kids kissing in front of their parents. Some people said that the um, the two young people were exchanging tongues. I didn't see that. I didn't see no nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, mean, I mean, off jump. Yeah. My kids are my children. I should say my C's kissing their romantic partner. You know what I'm saying? Would gross me out. Just like it grosses them out when they see their mom and dad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being affected. Like, hey, man, get a room. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when I was a child, I used to hear my parents in the other room getting busy and whatnot. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. I even made a stand-up joke about it. You know, I actually made it to the finals in a stand-up comedy show using that joke. But, <laughs> I mean, it can be gross, but it doesn't mean that it's unhealthy. It doesn't mean that you should intentionally, you know what I'm saying, not have your children, you know what I'm saying, uh, like, you, I don't think you should disencourage your children from having romantic relationships with, you know, you know, a person that they like, someone that they're attracted to. I think that's a healthy way to help our children grow into their sexuality, into their sexual experience and all that. I'm not talking about get them a hotel room and give them a box of condoms and say, go at it. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying watch porn with them. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you let them grow into it at their rate. And I don't, we're going to get some people in the comments. Cause I, I just really want to see if, if people really have a problem with two children kissing in front of their parents, or they have a problem with two trans young people in a, in a racial, you know what I'm saying? Relationship kissing. So what was y'all thoughts when, you know, you heard all this stuff and, Heard it come through the grapevine. Don't be the first to jump in. <laughs> I'm trying to gather my thoughts together. Yeah. But I got. Let me just say this. I'm, I, I kind of had my thoughts together a little earlier. But I'm a. I. I'm a touch touch on both spectrums real quick before I really answer your question. And um, what I'm saying is the only issue that I have with this, and I've said this before in the past, even on some posts. I am not a fan, and a lot of people may come at me like this, I'm not a fan of parents that expose their children a lot. I never was much of a fan of that. And I'm not talking about just the Gabriel Union. I'm talking even on a micro level. I see a lot of parents put a lot about their children's business for the world to know. I personally kind of don't, do, honestly, I don't have children. I just personally feel that I don't think us as the public should know your kids as well as we know you as the adult and parent, or more so. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's really meant. But in this particular situation, I heard that it wasn't Gabrielle Union or Dwayne Way. I believe it was Zaya. I think that's her name. I believe it was her who posted without their permission. So that's a different scenario. But that's why I want to get off my chest with that one. Anywho, let me just keep going forward. Uh, when I saw the picture, I felt nothing. I did not feel bothered at all. Because is she like, what, 14? Mm-hmm. 14? hate to be the bearer of bad news to, to you parents, but if you don't think your 14 year old don't have a little boyfriend or girlfriend at school, I got news for you. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I got some news for you. But um, some people do may feel some, uh, what's it called? Um, public public uh, display affection. I forgot yeah. what it's called. Some yeah. people do feel yeah. a little uncomfortable by it when they come to their child. And I think, that, I think that's a normal reaction. But for people to have this sort of, this purity mindset about it, I find yeah. it such a contradictory. It's such a hypocrite. You are totally very hypocritical about that type of stuff because, again, is it really about these two kids doing it or is it because these children who live in a different lifestyle from yourself or what you personally believe to be right? I look at it just two kids kissing. Yeah. I don't. I mean, my niece posted a picture of that and my mom's like, she shouldn't be posting that and, and, and she's too young for that. I'm like, she's 14, 15 years old. I'm not surprised by any of this. Mm. I'm just not surprised. I'm like, I got I got bigger things to worry about. Fans say I'll be worried if she's having sex. That fans say that'd be my biggest concern. Her kissing or hugging her part, her, a person she obviously like or in you know, a whatever relationship they have doesn't bother me at all. I'm worried about the serious stuff that can have an impact on their life. But as logic says, children have the right to develop affection in sexual and love development. That's kind of part of human nature. So I'm not exactly sure what 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 everyone being an anal asshole about it for. I think you got bigger shit to worry about. <laughs> you got bigger shit to worry about to me. Oh, okay. What what, what you think, Doc? Um, first thing when I saw the picture of them as a family, I wasn't worried about that. I didn't care about that. I did care about the fact they have that Dwayne Wade has a whole other child that's never in the pictures. So I'm like, I don't understand why people aren't more outraged that he has a family and he should be unifying all of his kids. So why is there one kid that we never see? Oh, right, that's a break baby. Regardless of how the baby was created, that's a child and that child should be part of the family. That was my first thing that I worried about. And then I saw everyone more worried about the, you know, the 14 year old. And then I'm thinking it's miss, I don't wanna say it's misguided, it just shows what, um, first off, how conservative we are as a group, um, despite mm-hmm. the fact or the PR that people think that I guess we're all thrown in in a circle and doing all this. But no, we are pretty conservative. Um, but on the other hand, it also kind of disturbs me that as a 14, 15 year old, you either have people that think that even for kids, they get the what Madonna whore thing that you're either pure and not doing anything or you're just having sex and public displays of affection. There's no middle ground. And I still believe that most black kids even are middle ground. Like maybe they, when I was 14, I wasn't worried about kissing anybody. I was more worried about just going to school and there weren't, I wasn't kissing anyone, but then there's this assumption because I'm a black girl that's, I was just doing it. So it's, it's just, I don't know. It's disappointing that we are so super conservative and it even sounds like we're afraid of, oh my God, even talking about or broaching sexual topics. We more we worry more about the biology of sex, so the perfunctionary acts versus this is an opportunity to, you know, got the emotional aspects. When do we have conversations about that with kids? That's where we should be trying to develop and support them. What's it like to break up at 14? What's it like to, you know, have a relationship and going, so those are the things that we need to talk about with kids. But more importantly, we should be focusing on the fact, why why is there a whole other child that you never see? And that is what I mean by exploiting folks. That's why I say I have a thing about parents exploiting their children. Because I thought the same. Because I believe Dwayne Ray got three other children. I think there's two, or three other children. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I believe he has two, or three other children with I think his first wife. I don't keep up with their life like that. And, and I, one with I, a girlfriend. I, yeah, and, girlfriend. Yeah, and that, and that particular child. And that's why I say I am not a fan of a parents on a celebrity level and on a micro level. Because some of you parents like to do the same shit. I am not a fan of y'all exploiting your kids. We should not know about your kids. Like. We should not know your kids as well as we know you as the adult. That's all I'm saying. But yes, what you said is exactly what I was meaning. No, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that at all. At all. Uh, what are you going to tell me? Yeah. Um, 
I was I was like six or seven when I had my first kiss. I remember it. Good, good old Cincinnati, Ohio, Swifton Elementary. Her name was Bianca. It was great. <laughs> and she made sure I kept my hands off of her, too. She's like, oh, no, we're just kissing. <laughs> well, well, look at that. <laughs> we're just kissing. And, I, and, and even to this day, there was nothing unnatural and healthy about it. I mean, we definitely did it in secrecy because we... You know, we grew up, you know, um, in Christian, you know, black Christian, um, you know, households where, you know, you could actually be punished, physically punished for showing affection towards the opposite sex at a premature age, mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to your parents and or your elders. Um, you know, some people have been kicked out of their house, beat for having sex, you know, and I think that is way more unnatural, way more unhealthy than anything that a 14, two 14 year olds of interracial variety kissing on social media could ever do. Beating your child, hitting your child, kicking them out of the house, disowning them, shaming them because they, they had sex or because they kissed or they're, you know, a quote unquote, you know what I'm saying, slut or something, that's, that's whack. That's a lot of European value systems that have been incorporated into our lives that we take and it's like, oh, you know, Jesus wouldn't like that. You're sinning. And I'm like, how do we all get here? You know what I mean? It's like, we all got here the same way, you know what I'm saying? Um, through some kind of reproduction, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Well, most of us, we didn't all get here through intercourse mm -hmm. by itself. And some of us didn't kiss while we were having intercourse either. So that <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I, I find it such a I find it so uh, and what I mean by so many people are hypocrites that you treat as showing affection or even having topics of sex with your children is such a taboo. And I find that so weird because I'm pretty sure many of y'all who having a, a, an outrage, y'all partake in the same shit as your kid is. With that being said, you should have a healthier approach instead of trying to play chastity belt right. on your kids. Mm -hmm. Why that's still that's a, parents out there who got a problem. Why that's such a taboo to you? Hey, precious, how old were you when you got your first kiss? I was eight. Oh, okay, eight. What about you? Eight. What about you? Eight. Eight. He was eight, and I'm still friends with him on Facebook. I ain't gonna say his name, but my Doc, folks already know who it is. Doc, how old were you? 18. Okay. And the only reason 18 was because I had a, a cousin, she since passed away, I believe, but when she was 11, my other cousin, they caught her kissing a boy and her mom beat her with a brush. And I'm like, I don't ever want to be beaten with a brush. So that's why <laughs> I avoided with the plague. Nobody's going to beat me until I was 18. So no. So I was afraid because I thought, I don't want to be beaten. Yeah, and there's just so many things to unpack. I don't I don't see how parents can actually think it's a healthy thing to, to associate pain, punishment, and shame with physical or, or sexual attraction. That, I, that seems like that is just a great, express way to sexual dysfunction when a person gets older. It's like, I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people feel ashamed to express who they are sexually and, and, and their sexuality, because at a young age, they had to repress so much of who they are and couldn't be free and have a, you know, autonomy. That's why this is a good question. It's like, when does autonomy and sovereignty come into play for our children as well as their development? of that through these actions and choices. I think also what you're saying, um, when I think even about Lee, you know, her parents caught both of them kissing, but she was the one who was beaten with the brush. And I think that was the message that as a woman or as a girl, you have to protect this because you will get a reputation and for them, you'll embarrass us. So mm -hmm. you can't do this. So then that later on, of course you, you learn early that particularly as a girl, there are certain things that you need to protect to make sure that they're pristine and pure because 
your value is based on resisting any urges. Yeah. And that's the and I feel that sort of narrative is affects girls more than boys, in my personal opinion. I think that had a way bigger impact on girls. And and I had this conversation with my mom just a couple of days ago because I was talking about some family members' daughters, how they were treating her when it comes to something like this. And I said, I never was too fond of this chassis belt game that I like to play, but y'all don't apply the same rules to your son. Because many of them have this notion that doing it uh, having affection with whatever going to lead to sex. And you know the old school saying that people say, well, girls bring home babies. I'm like, yeah, but boys go out and create single parent households too. But y'all don't think that far ahead. Y'all so fixated on what girls and what they could be tempted to do or exposed to. But you're not teaching post gender health, healthy approaches when it comes to love and sex and relationships. Yeah. I mean, there's so much to unpack here. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about black people specifically, um, and we're talking about showing affection towards each other. Um, and I would like y'all to get in the comments and, and tune in and 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 give us some responses and some, you know, I wanna I wanna why is it disrespectful for children to kiss or show affection in front of adults? Like what's the what's the what's the really big deal here? You know what I'm saying? And what are you gonna do? <laughs> What are you going to do? So your child kisses, your child's 13, 14 years old. And I can speak to this because some high schoolers are 14 years old. They're coming in as freshmen as 14 years old. And I've worked at every single level. So as an educator, I'm looking at it from a different lens of raising other people's children and seeing them in the hallways kissing. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> it's something that we want to help facilitate but when it happens in front, okay, so okay, so let, let, let's go through this scenario. I'm walking through the hallway and I'm an elder and kids are kissing in the hallway. What's the appropriate punishment if that's not allowed? If that's not cool, what am I supposed to do? Smack them, take them to the office, call, hey man, I caught your, you know, your son and your daughter. I caught your, uh, your daughter and another girl kissing in the hallway. I caught your son and another boy kissing in the hallway, blah, blah, blah. I caught, uh, you know, I caught your son kissing a non-binary student in the hallway. Like, what sense does that make? It. What are you supposed to do? Like, what's the, if you're out there and you think that children kissing in front of adults, specifically their parents and their elders is disrespectful, then what are you supposed to do? And if they don't stop doing it in front of you, what are you supposed to do? Punish them, say they can't be around them. So now they're sneaking around now. Now they're sneaking around trying to get kisses and probably doing other things without your supervision. I would want my child, even though if I'm even though I'm grossed out by it, you know what I mean? I would want my child to seek me for guidance and not and not bite it from me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, another thing is the whole kissing thing. Like, how are you gonna raise your children on kissing? to show affection towards another family member or a loved one, or maybe you don't, and that's a whole different conversation, but how are you gonna raise your children on, it's okay for mommy and daddy to kiss. It's okay for mommy to kiss you and daddy to kiss you when they wanna show that they love it. It's okay for your brother and sister to kiss and daddy to da, kiss on the cheek, whatever, do whatever. And then when they kiss someone outside the family that they like, then that's out of bounds. That's a violation. That's so confusing. I also think that us as a, ah, oh, hell, who doing this? I also feel at the same time, I feel that we also as a society tend to hypersexualize black children too. That even something as innocent as a hug or a kiss, or even like a peck on a kiss is so hypersexualized when it's so innocent. True story. I was doing one of my substitute teaching assignments. We went to this pumpkin patch and we was on this wagon. I had to get on, make sure the kids would be safe. And there was a boy who had arm around this girl. Please know they're kindergartners. I found nothing wrong with it. They're children. And she didn't seem like she was under there. She hold she was hanging on hanging on to him too. But in the teacher, oh no, that's inappropriate. I don't think that's right. That's inappropriate. I said, wasn't inappropriate by their five-year-olds. I said, You are sexualizing this. They're children. They don't know that. He looked at her as a friend, and they've been and they've been holding hands and they've been there. They're friends, they're classmates. Right. I, said, I don't find that inappropriate. I just don't, everything's not sexualized to me. That's a very good point. And that's where I was kind of getting at when 
I have that example, but you articulated it better than me. It's just like a kiss is exactly what it is. It's a kiss. It's a show of affection. Show of affection is that doesn't mean it's sexual. Exactly. And just because you're attracted to someone and you kiss them doesn't mean that you're sexually attracted to them. I went to Africa. I saw brothers kissing brothers, holding hands. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, brother. I love my brother. Okay. Okay. That's going to take a little bit for me to get used to because I'm a, I'm kind of a boundary guy. You know what I'm saying? With the whole yeah. kissing stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know? But, um, you know, I, I, I kiss. I still kiss my son. I just not seen him the other day. Seen him at the art show. I kissed him. He kisses me. He sometimes he initiates. Sometimes I do. Might be on the forehead. Might be on the um, cheek. If he had it, if if it's on the lips, okay. Oh well. I know. I know what you're saying. That's your child. It's not. The, I know what I'm trying to say is kissing is a form of affection. You know what I'm saying? What, what you think, Doc? I, I I feel like you, you your your brain is over there. Go on. <laughs> I I. I believe that, of course, it's healthy, but I also think there's a time and a place for things. So as parents and adults, if we're continually crossing boundaries and doing um, things that I may think are inappropriate boundary issues in front of kids, and then your kids reflect doing that same thing, then yeah, then you have no, um, then you're being a hypocrite if you point out that, hey, you shouldn't be like tonguing your girlfriend in front of me if you're doing that with your you should there i think in some ways there are some activities that are i don't want to say for adults for people that are emotionally equipped to handle the repercussions of the relationship or of certain acts and there are some ages and you know your child that that would not be appropriate for so um yeah, it's just all a matter of knowing your child and also respecting boundaries and communicating to them that there are time, there's a time and a place for certain things. Yeah. Yeah. But are, are, are you talking about a kiss though? Cause that's what we're talking about. We're talking um, about I'm talking about a kiss as well. Yeah. Okay. I think there so are certain parents to kiss each other in front of their children because. It depends on how you're kissing in front of your kids. Well, I'm not talking about. You have no, to know your kids too. I'm not talking about a. I'm not. I'm not talking about a, a kiss that originated in France. I'm not talking about a French kiss. I'm talking. About okay. <laughs> you know, you kissing, you showing affection. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, arm, um, arm around them and stuff like that. I remember I grew up seeing my stepdad um, put his hand in the back pocket of my um, my mom, you know, jeans or something, you know, it was all appropriate. I thought I, 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 it was, mm -hmm. you know, they, they loved each other. And I think it was healthy for me, for me, it was healthy to see, you know, two black people, you know what I'm saying? A man and a woman show affection towards each other. Mm -hmm. I, I would not have liked the opposite. I wouldn't have liked it to be just static and stale. And they just like not be next to each other and not hold hands and, you know, and that's something that, you know, I appreciate in the relationship. I, I, I like a person who's affectionate if I'm into him, you know what I'm saying? Like that. And I appreciated my mom and dad modeling that. I did not appreciate hearing them be romantic <laughs> that night. <so. laughs> no, um, trust me, none of us like that shit at all. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's like, this is terrible. This is horrible what you're doing. <laughs> 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 um, I wanted to get to Joy. Joy Sparks says we have to be mindful of the fact that some children children have been exposed to far more than other kids, so it's okay to observe the situation that very bit. Absolutely, that's absolutely, cool. yeah. No one's saying let them go willy nilly. That's that's a um, yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. That's a that's an excellent point, and that's why that's why it even gives even more merit and credence that you want them to do it in front of you, so you can be observing some stuff like, hey, now listen here. When I say I want to be able to supervise stuff, like it was always a rule, you know what I'm saying? And growing up in my household when I was a child and uh, when my children were, uh, were there, well, they didn't have that much company either, though. But if they had a, a, a lady friend over or a guy friend over, it didn't really happen that often. But the door got to be open. I got to be able to see what's going on because like Joy said, like, hey, man, we want to make sure that, you know, we're being appropriate. And I know that it's healthy. You know what I'm saying? 
but there's just some things that you ain't gonna use my my house as a hotel room. That's just not gonna happen, you know. And I think that's two separate categories because I'm not gonna punish my children. I'm not gonna punish my children for being affectionate and, and being sexual with another child or shame them because I want them to have the most healthy experience possible. But I did do, do this. I tell you this. I was in fierce competition with any <laughs> any person that they might like. They were in sports. They were hanging out with the fellow. Oh, they ain't got time to do that. They got to do this. You know what I'm saying? So they were always doing something because mm -hmm. me seeing young people grow up in high school and they have these romantic and sexual relationships in high school, they're just not, they're just not ready. They're not emotionally ready. I'm like, and I used to tell my children, I was like, I would rather you just totally explore you know who you are once you get to college because especially for a young lady she have any kind of interaction sexually or romantic with one dude and she she might as well just did the whole football team because they're gonna shame her and then the dude he's gonna be like oh he's a player this is that third both stigmas and stereotypes are not healthy at all Agreed. i don't want my son to grow up to you know be seen as oh you get points for being a predator and I don't want my daughter to stay like normal romantic sexual attention that you might get from a dude makes her a slut or some kind of whore. Like that's whack. So I was just like, man, I would really appreciate it. You know, if y'all just like really explored this in college, but they didn't. And they went to the same high school that I was, you know, at. And one of my colleagues like, how do you deal with that? I mean, you you know, your daughters and your son having boyfriends and girlfriends and they walk around holding hands. I'm like, I'm here, but I'm here though. I got to let them grow up. You know why? Because when I was in high school, you know, I had a girlfriend, several, at different times. And this is how they learn how to navigate that. And I'm just glad that I'm here so I can have, um, you know, so I can be a resource if they need guidance through that experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it? Kish Kishan Wilson said, we as black folks come from the generations that have been deemed a lot of stuff disrespectful to control behavior we don't like or feel uncomfortable with, and we just pass it on. Some of it definitely comes from a survival trauma experience or perspective. Example, uncomfortable mm -hmm. because their own childhood sexual abuse. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's why anytime a girl is is developed very early they already deemed her as a as fast even if she ain't doing anything if she's fully developed they automatic automatic kind of ding her especially black girl we automatically ding if such if you develop very early yeah i i definitely would agree to that even if you ain't doing nothing right not with a whole ho, -ho. <laughs> bobby see, 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 see bobby, bobby bobby why didn't come on you should have came on here bobby <laughs> your poor example see you know and then you enjoy chiming in, co-signing with her pom-poms, playing. Pom -poms. <laughs> you know what? Well, Y'all ain't right, man. You know hey, what I'm you saying? Want little, hey, you want a little pretty boy in high school. I just, I believe it. I want, I want to let y'all know, when I was in my exclusive relationships, I was very committed. I didn't choose. That's why it took a while for me to get in those relationships. I had two, two, three very, very exclusive relationships. And that's how I know I didn't want my children to be involved <laughs> in that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in high school, because um, no, I did not have a jerry curl, Bobby. That was your father. God, <laughs> come on, bro. I did not have a jerry curl. Come I, don't on. Think, I don't think, I don't think Legend was, I don't know. I don't think you were born for the jerry curl, were you? Uh, at, nah, least, nah, at least nah, not as a dog or uh, uh, older. Nah, man, I wasn't rocking around with a shower cap on my head. Cut the crap. <laughs> I just know that the three relationships, the three, the three main relationships that I had in high school, um, and I even have, yeah, shoot, it was four actually. They were, they were emotionally, you know, um, they had a lot of emotional weight on them, especially the last one, my senior year. It's like. You know, when she broke up with me, I was like, damn, I thought we was going to be together for forever. And then it's just it's a lot of emotional stuff that you have to go through. And I'm just glad that I had music, arts, 
Um, and I'm glad I had um, sports and that I didn't have to put all that weight on uh, a romantic relationship with a young lady to fill my voids that I had in my life. You know, my father not being there, just different stuff, going through a divorce, you know, my, um, my mom and my stepdad. I'm glad that I had other things to get attention from because that's a lot of weight to put on a relationship when you're only in high school. We got uh, divinity in the house. What's going on? What's going on? What up? I'm here. I made it back. <laughs> huh. Ten-minute run to the store turned into forever. No, no. I, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to settle in. Um, Y'all stay in the comments. Go ahead and comment. Mm -hmm. Let us know uh, what you feel. Like, why is it disrespectful for children to kiss or show affection in front of adults? And I also want to talk about the racial element too. Would there would you have some concern if if your black child wasn't in, involved in an interracial relationship specifically with a white <laughs> child? You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't talking about like, is there anyone out there who's willing to, you know, just be courageous? You know what I'm saying? Be like, yeah, I just have a problem with that. You, you know, it's two trans kids. I have a I have a problem that 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 you know that. The one young person was white, and and and, and Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union's uh, child was is is black. That's what I have a problem with. Like, mm. is it appropriate to have a concern if your child is in an interracial relationship? Because that's the other elephant in the room. <laughs> that's a whole other show. <laughs> I, know, that's a segment. <laughs> I could definitely. I, mean, I don't talk. I, mean, I don't talk on that a lot, but I will say uh, what I've noticed from those of that community. Uh, oftentimes, where I do see a black person, and you, a lot of times, and not, it do be with a white counterpart. I'm not sure if because the, there's many in the black community that's not comfortable with their sexuality mm -hmm. that's yet for them to choose from. It could be just due to um, proximity, perhaps. Maybe that's one who's close for her. That's probably who's close by. I mean, that's on. That's the only take I got. I definitely went through that growing up in Issaquah for like three years. You know what I'm saying? I tried to get that, you know, that 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 black girl who lived. <laughs> but she didn't like me. She liked Brad. <laughs> I mean, it, it could, it could, especially them being young like that. And from personal experience, that's probably what it more likely is. But again, what they like when they're young, like they could drastically change as they get older mm -hmm. and they start being around more people and more, yeah. Broaden horizon, it could definitely change up more. So, honestly, yeah. I wouldn't even think about race when I saw that situation. I was just looking at people talking about how they shouldn't be this, that, and the third because they kids and stuff like that. I was just looking at the hypocrisy of it all for me. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely thought about race. That was one of the many things. <laughs> Another elephant in the room too is the incredible amount of privilege that the Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union family have and the resources they have to protect their kids and insulate them, you know what I'm saying, with that experience, you know what I'm saying? Correct. So I don't know, maybe, I mean, maybe the proximity of people in their tax bracket in their neighborhood and their demographics is now white people. I don't know. I don't know. And I, but, but I do know they have the resources that they can make it all black if they wanted to, because I know there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of black celebrities that they could be around too. But I'm not telling them to do that. I'm just I'm just trying to unpack the situation. And I understand the concerns that, you know, someone would have with their child dating, uh, especially in that affluent neighborhood, dating a white person, because I would be I would be concerned about my child, you know, having um, replacing how they feel about themselves and um, trying to adhere to right standards of beauty, you know, what I'm saying and forgetting who they are, you know, what I'm saying. Um, that would be my concern, but I would still support it. You, know? you have to examine what you communicated to them, what is valued, because, I mean, as a parent, I have two sons of which, you know, one exclusively dates one way and another exclusively dates another. And I had to look at myself and what I communicated was valuable. And so by placing them in an all or predominantly white school um, under the pretext of, oh, well, it's better academically. I had to realize what I placed a value on and what that action communicated to them. So then 
I can't, could not be all shocked and upset that there are at least five or six black girls you could have gone out with and you're going to go and ask this one. So I had to look at myself. What I communicated was important, especially when they're under age and not be shocked. So then look at yourself. So even with the Wades as an example, if someone was going to look at, oh, well, you know, she has a, a, a white boyfriend now, it's like, okay, why aren't you then looking at the family and what they communicated is valuable to their kids through their lifestyle? Don't blame the child. Yeah, Bobby said, I remember my mom was a bit hurt. Yeah, I think he has a white, he has a white mother because I never brought a white girl home and I just told her I don't like them, but it wasn't her fault. <laughs> it ain't your fault. <laughs> um, You've you've been hearing us talk a little bit, um, you know. Uh, what are you, what are your what, what were your first thoughts, um, and uh, to <clears throat> the um, Wade and Union, you know, uh, pictures that were posted. Um, Precious said that it was actually um, how you pronounce the young person's name, Zaya. I think that's Zaya. her name. Mm -hmm. That's her name, yeah. Zaya. Um, Precious said that well, you know um, I um she that they uh, posted the pictures. And then what do you think about the response? Like people saying, oh, it's mm -hmm. just disrespectful for children to kiss in front of, of adults. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a little cap, a lot of cap. But uh, what do you think, uh, Divinity? <clears throat> I think, um, so first of all, Zaya, I stand Zaya. I have sworn my sword to Zaya and I am up in the comments late at night slaying bigots for her on her behalf. <laughs> um, but I digress. Uh, what I think is when it comes to uh, children, I don't like to impart my perversions onto children. And what I mean by that is when <clears throat> I see something and my mind goes to a dirty place, I have to constantly reconcile that this child has not had the experiences that I have, so they don't have the same associations that I do. It's the way that children can say things that are unintentionally dirty and make it uncomfortable for people who don't know how to <laughs> appropriately respond to children. When I saw the kiss, um, and heard that the person was trans. It all kind of came at once because somebody was upset and going off about it. And uh, so I took it all in and I was just like, I don't care. Like they're kids, they kiss. What are you making it into? What does a kiss then entail to you that imparts disrespect onto the adult? Um, that I can't, I can't follow that rabbit hole. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, and it just seems to me that you have a lot of perverts imparting their own perversions on this picture of these two children showing affection toward each other. Um, and I think we over-sexualize affection too much in the society where men are not allowed to show affection to other men because that's somehow gay or like it just it gets to a point where i just want you to say the thing like the 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 using this as a smoke screen or as a dog whistle just say you don't like them because they're trans like i'm not buying the, oh, I feel that it's disrespectful when we have television shows like Teen Mom that get millions of views and, and umpteen seasons when Kardashians are popping out babies as children are freaking marrying, grown, or not marrying, but at least entertaining and sleeping with grown men as children. And we say nothing. We hear it, we say, oh, huh. We know that Kylie Jenner was like, 16, Tyga was like, what, 20 something? Like we knew this, but we didn't say anything. But now that it's about this child who is not only black, but trans, now it's an issue. Now it's an issue that we need to drag. 
And how embarrassing, like, is this? Like, what if that was like her first kiss, you know? And now it's the subject of public debate. Was this okay? Was this disrespectful? How do you gauge disrespect for somebody else? If Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade are not feeling disrespected, where are you getting, where do you, what part of your degree allows you to pontificate on that for her, that she's now disrespected? That's what I don't understand. And I think that when we talk about disrespect, it's not, it's a very vague term, right? So I was just having a conversation with another gentleman and I was telling him that, uh, he was telling me that he felt disrespected when a trans woman had came on to him. And I said, well, what do you mean? Why would you feel disrespected by that? He says, well, because I'm not like that. But you're on a dating app. And she doesn't know that. And she shot her shot. So why was that disrespectful? Like, you can just say no and block her. And he could not articulate what the disrespect was. And when I said, well, if she was cis and had done the same thing, would you have felt disrespected? Well, no. But if I wasn't attracted to, I didn't ask you if you were attracted to her. That wasn't a part of my question. So anyway, the point being, I think that at the end is being sensationalized and then being children is also being like this dog whistle for like um, pedophilia. And I'm not comfortable like with that in this situation like it's it's often the underlying context of what they talk about when they talk about Zaya like they talk about like they get so engrossed in her sexuality apart from her gender or even the surgical aspects of transition which she's not even about to about to like get into right now furthermore I think both of these children should be on uh, hormone blockers right now. So that's a, like the, the sex that you guys are thinking is supposed to be happening. I'm not, none of it is making sense. So I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Joyce said, uh, I've been conditioned to not like gay people. I sound racist because I say I have gay friends, but some gay people make me uncomfortable. It's really our lack of understanding. Wait, I sound racist because okay, I, um, I don't say I don't understand how you sound racist when you say you don't have. You sound you know, like a racist. That's oh, the logic like, that racist you. Like, like a racist. Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, Joy had another comment says, um, I think we've been conditioned to shame those that are open with their sexuality. I'm guilty of it. I'm not cool with it. And it's going to take some heavy conversations like this to help me understand this new world acceptance. So, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why we do see. Talk. It's a colonial. It's a colonial thing, right? So, like, like, it's a colonial conditioning. So, like, Indigenous places don't treat people like this who are gender variant. Thing that's a European ideology, and when your mindset is just wrapped in colonialism, to where you believe that there are two genders and everybody else who thinks that there isn't is dumb or a sinner or whatever word you have for it. Like I, for me. I can't debate somebody who has a colonial mindset like without addressing that, like uh, without making sure that that is known, that we are not coming from this, from the same perspective, but it is my goal to get you onto my perspective because I'm right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm with Penny Scott. I heard this stuff too. I, I heard some people saying that um, Zaya kissing this other young person was kitty porn. I was like, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's but here's the association the of her being trans. 
Because when we see Corey and Topanga kiss on Boy Meets World, that's not kitty porn. When we see well, children over-sexualized in movies and media any other time, we're not sitting here like, oh my God, wrenching our wrists about like, this whole conversation is happening because both of these individuals are trans. And I would even go so far as to say interracial. But I think them being trans is really the hot button issue. It's why everybody won't leave this little girl alone. And I mean, I'm at the point where I just hope she is in some way, shape or form a conductor of this train and not just being pulled along by it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't kitty porn, just like it wasn't, you know, animated bestiality when the princess kissed the frog. Like, come on, like, you guys are going, <laughs> people are going way too far. I mean, we got, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we literally have romantic theme events for our children. I don't know um, mm -hmm. how many people allow their children to participate in Valentine's Day, but I work at a high school and I've worked at a middle school and an elementary school collectively it's celebrated and recognized children are going to school trying to collect valentines trying to give valentines to a person that they're really into bringing balloons and all that and the parents totally support that they support they these yeah. romantic romantic uh themed uh dances like tolo twin tolo where you go looking like the person and you dance and prom and it's so it's like so we encourage all this romantic interactions with our children as young as elementary school with Valentine's Day. And then we're surprised. And then we we show them these cartoons with these heteronormative themes also where, you know what I'm saying, the princess is kissing the, you know, the prince and the king has the queen. The princess queen. be wearing a bikini in the daytime. Yeah, Disney. Like, Disney. put some clothes yeah. on. What are so, you doing? So then all of a sudden we see... <laughs> It's Two 10 degrees people. outside. You on a carpet Kissing. flying around with no clothes. I'm sorry. <laughs> did we see? <laughs> did we see I two 14-year-olds? Oh, no. Oh, go ahead. 14-year-olds kissing, and then all of a sudden, oh, my God, they were kissing in front of their parents. It's kitty porn. No, it's not. Cut it out. You know what I mean? Um, Joy Sparks says, so can we speak to the idea that the exposure <laughs> somehow influencing how we see our black men. That might be a whole different episode. Did anyone want to speak on that? I think what they're trying to say is because Zaya transitioned. I think what she's trying to say is because Zaya transitioned, that this is going to cause a wave of young black men or young black males to want to transition. Um, That's not from, from not male to female. And, 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 and things of that nature. I think that's what she's trying to say. Uh, if she is, I don't see us that monolithic like that. That uh, everybody be affected mm -hmm. by somebody else's action of choices. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't think I don't think it works. I mean, I get what she's trying to say because media is very influential, but at the same time, everybody's not going to do what they see on TV. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't do everything I saw on TV. Yeah. So and I don't, I don't think it, I mean, that's just me. I don't think we're that monolithic mm -hmm. like that. That because one person did like did, what's that one guy who who dressed in that blue that blue dress? What's that rapper name? He had a little blue dress on or whatever with the umbrella. I forgot that rapper name. I ain't seen many dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't mm -hmm. seen many dudes. You know, no dressing with a little with an umbrella tipped to the side. So I ain't seen many dudes for that. I mean, I don't think if anything, it may encourage those who may already have those feelings already. Mm -hmm. But but hell, we already got some of that right now, and they still still don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. coming out or living in a full truth. But so look at the yeah. toxic. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be like yeah. saying so. That's little person. Wayne mm -hmm. had a child when he was 13. So that would be like saying, and he was popular in New Orleans and rapping. So that would mean that that influenced other black men to have children at 13 years old because. Of him, I, I don't think what someone does in the public sphere versus the people you're around that that would impact your decisions. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. 
Okay. Yeah, Joy, Joy said, she said, I also want to say, in my opinion, if there was a, all this sexual exposure when I was coming up, I think I would play with the idea of being gay. So, okay. but there was, there was. There, yeah. Well, was I, I guess you're going to how she was raised and what company she'd been around. But when I was growing up, it was definitely some of that around. Oh, it was definitely mm -hmm. gay awesome. people in, middle, in junior high. I mean, but so, again, so, it, it depends on her personal experience. You, this is the thing, though, because as prevalent as heterosexuality is, prior to my transition, I never wanted to try it. It was never, I never was like, as many heterosexuals that I was around, it's not something you can catch. It's not something that exposure to will make you be. I am a trans woman who dates men. My mother is not. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like, it, I just don't, I don't think that's true. And I think that if, I don't, I don't say I think that, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's how that works. Because I think if that was the case, then you would be saying that you have like, gay things that you're feeling now that like because you were not exposed to i think i'm just confused yeah i think i'm confused one of my things is this like i hear this argument a lot that you know if we keep presenting these images of like martin lawrence um in dresses tyler perry in dresses numerous uh eddie murphy in dresses numerous people in dresses and we keep having black men um, like the one brother who was in Green Book. Like we keep having these images of effeminate black men, feminine, gay black men, that our black boys are going to see this and it's going to influence them. So my thing is this, like a lot of things have to happen and come into play for a person to grow into their sexuality and who, are, who they are. When I grew up, Prince and Michael Jackson were huge, huge. I did not see the majority of my homeboys trying to be like Prince and Michael Jackson. They weren't running around with the glove on one hand. A lot of them had the jackets, but they weren't trying to be like androgynous and effeminate and feminine like, um, you know, Prince and Michael Jackson for a number of reasons, because they wouldn't get any social incentives from it. These are performers that are performing. So that's one aspect to look at it. The other aspect of it is if they start acting like um, a Zaya or a Prince or a Michael Jackson, does that mean they don't become like meaningful contributors to our community? So like, if you're not just super masculine, you know what I mean? And an athlete and acting like, you know, um, the most masculine rapper out there, you know what I'm saying? That's not feminine or not nurturing. Like, so if you're not acting like that, then you have no use to our community. We have to examine that too. We have to examine that every Ramadan, I see a group of men who have long dresses on. I know it's different. I know. And they fast and they kiss their brothers, but they have long dresses on. But they're no less of a man. They're no less of contributors to the South. Talk about Muslim brothers. I see Samoan brothers, you know what I'm saying, with, you know what I'm saying, the sarongs on, walking around the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, showing their cultural pride. They're not any less of a man. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out why is it when black men become more nurturing, effeminate or feminine, and embrace that, they automatically... We start to we start to think that they're less of a contributor to our community. Like there's a there's so many black men in our community. There's not room for effeminate, gay, you know what I'm saying? You know, trans men. Like I don't I don't get it. Like, what are we saying? There's so many men in our community that aren't contributors. There's too many that aren't healthy. Why is it if they act like Zaya, should that be like, you know what I'm saying? One of the reasons why they're not healthy. Does that make sense to anybody? 
because I know a whole bunch of men or too many men that aren't in their, in their, in their child's lives. And they're the complete opposite of Zion. They grew up the complete opposite, but they're not meaningful contributors to their community. So until you can show me there's a correlation between men being like, you know, growing up like Zaya and like that means that they're not, they can't con contribute to their community, then I, I'm going to need some more data. I'm, I'm, I, I, help me understand. But that is what we, that is what we say. So we devalue LGBT people of color. We throw them away. And when you get mad, because we're not maybe showing up for someone that you think we should show up for, or we're not doing something that you think we should do, then you come at us with aggression. Like, well, what is it that you guys even want? To quote Dr. Umar, or uh, uh, I just am trying to figure y'all out because like y'all run after the rainbow community and y'all y'all support them, but y'all don't support us. Like there's always this, this ultimatum that trans people have to, to deal with, like where we have to choose between the community that we created and the community that you guys ostracized us from. And then because white people are more prevalent in that community, like they have the media houses, they have all of the ways to get exposure out there um, more so than black content creators who are LGBTQ and, oh crap, brain farted. I don't know what I was gonna say. Didn't I was going somewhere speak. with content creation. <laughs> Silent but deadly, I guess. <laughs> Silent hey, but uh, here's, here's another thing I wanna say before we go into the uh, um, and, you know um, plan of action. Um, Joy said that was entertainment though, those examples. But I, I I would argue that the the ultra toxic masculine black man is a form of entertainment too, and that the white owned white supremacist media um, sources are anti black. So I would say the hyper so then break down the humor of it. A hyper masculine violent stereotypical black male that they put us out there the drug dealer I think that's entertainment too. But. The majority why? of black men aren't like that. Like, and, um, have you thought about why that is specifically? I have, but go ahead, go ahead. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, I mean, I can just riff off the top of my head. Like if, if I'm going to participate as to why would, if I'm creating a social structure, why would it be advantageous to me as a white cis hetero male for a black person or black man who is typically seen as the most dominant, aggressive alpha uh, of the species to pretend to be feminine and nurturing. And like, for me, I don't understand how all of those qualities cannot exist within a masculine body. Like, because femininity isn't flourish, you know what I mean? Like, it isn't dramatic long gowns and trains and long hair. That's not what femininity is. So, a man can embody the qualities of femininity, of being nurturing, kind, gentle, and still embody his masculine. Yeah, I've I've been telling that to people for years. Like, like mm -hmm. you know, I I do the whole, you but know. How powerful I, is that person? Yeah, I I do the whole astrology, you know, and I'm a Pisces. I'm a feminine sign. I you know I study Yoruba and Ifa and Voodoo. I know that, you know, right. energy and masculine energy being balanced is complementary duality, and and that's 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 what the oppressors sought to divide. Yeah, and then yeah. successful. It makes them more powerful, you know what I mean? Um, but I will, I will also say to Joy, it's like all these brothers, a lot of these brothers that you think that are, are not being um, like, who are not like feminine and who are 
not like gay or whatever, a lot of them are repressing their true desires just to get social incentives so you won't shame them. I think that, you know, if a lot of these people, a lot of black men that we look up to and that we celebrated these masculine men, and there's so many, I know it, I know it, that are in the closet and, 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 and are afraid to come out, you know what I'm saying? If they just, they would, you would be questioning everything about your value system and what you think, you know, a man is and whatnot, because we have been conditioned to say, well, if he's not manly and masculine, he must be gay or he must be a woman or he must be feminine or he must be specific. If he's not strong, he must be weak. And strong and weak are both subjective. And mm -hmm. those, that binary logic is purely colonial. Purely. Either you're a Christian or you're a sinner. Either you're black or you're white. Either you're a slave or a slave master. But we know it's not, it's just not either or, it's either or and. We work in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so we the the, the binary logic is is one of the main indicators that the, that what you're how you're breaking down and unpacking something is is colonial. Bell Hooks taught me that. <laughs> All right. So uh, if would you consider, about, I have a question, just a quick ahead, question. Would you consider um, Martin Luther King to be a modern example of masculinity? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. He, okay. he, but he exhibited a lot of feminine energy also. He was a nurturer. I saw far more um, of him leading with feminine energy than with masculine energy. Yeah. Um, he, he was not a particularly masculine. aggressive yeah. person. I and think he's masculine. What I, what I, hmm? I think he's masculine. I think it's both. I mean, but I didn't, we, say, I didn't I, say he wasn't masculine. Yeah. I didn't say that. I said, I think he led in a feminine way. And I think the way that he led created something that terrified white people. Mm -hmm. And what white people will do when they are terrified is they will react in covert spiritual ways. So I think I was talking to you when I told you about, you know, when the news reporters will make the victims of racist abuse <laughs> or uh, forgive the abuser or the racist on television so that they can quell the energy of the uprising that's happening. Um, they're not ignorant to spirituality. Like they understand it as well and they weaponize it against you. So MLK leads femininely, nurturing people, educating people, um, then, you know, in Harry Potter, uh, I use this as a reference, there's a, a spell called Ridiculous and it changes something you're afraid of into something stupid or funny. Um, if it's a ghost, it'll turn into like a balloon and fly away. Like it's, it just quells your fears. And that's a lot of what white people do. It's a lot of what I see. And so when I see them constantly creating roles of black men in these, um, drag roles but like they're always playing nurturers mammy characters the unthreatening uh feminine energy mm. that's where white america is comfortable either there or where you're the aggressive thug gangster and so that's what I mean when I say we have to rethink how we identify what is masculine and what is feminine. Yeah, That's all. I see that. Yeah. Anything y'all, um, Precious and um, and Doc, uh, <laughs> anything y'all want to add on to before we go into this plan of action? No, nah, I think we hit a dead on the net. I think we all in the same, I think we all think the same thing about this situation. And just about a comment. Some, some pretty much for the most part kind of agree, and there's some who may be on the fence. 
I agree. Uh, I agree. I think we should think about our plan of action. Definitely. <laughs> I'm more like stay out of kids' business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should. <laughs> That part. My you, want to, uh, you want to start it off, Dr. Diamond, with the plan of action? What do you think the plan of action is based on what we talked about tonight? Oh, gosh. I think as a people um, in general, we need to address affection, um, emotions in a more mature way than we do. Uh, we're very childish in our inner, in our dealings in terms of even what gender identity and all those things mean, we're very juvenile. We need to reconnect to what it originally meant for us as a people before we came here versus trying to meet um, European standards that we were indoctrinated in. And um, yeah, glad to see, glad to see that um, what Joy's um, statement as well, but yeah, plan of action is to try and I would say reach out more to people and I don't want to say explain to them or help push their thinking in terms of the very myopic and juvenile ways that we tend to address um, sexuality and over sexualizing black children too early. Meanwhile, not noticing things that we should pay attention to, like kids that are, you know, being molested in our families, as well as um, the fact that we're, we're saying these things about, you know, modeling uh, a plan in terms of modeling um, for Black children positive um, interactions. It's very difficult to do when the majority of us are now are raised in single parent, usually led by women household. And as a single parent, as a Black woman, you're constantly bouncing the Madonna whore thing. You're on one hand, um, you're told you need to you know, concentrate on your kids. Don't be bringing any man or woman around your kids. But um, so that also creates either kids seeing a completely celibate like parent that has no interaction. So it's hard to try to support those families in terms of modeling what positive interactions between um, loving people looks like. Thank you for that. I love that. Um, I'll, I'll go next. Um, I'll say the plan of action, man, is, you know, you know, show your children, you know, affection and, and nurture them and love them. You know what I'm saying? Create that safe place for um, that to happen, you know, without shame or being embarrassed. Like, you know, use affection, you know, saying and, and, and love and nurturing as a consequence for even things that they do that's a mistake. You know, you can tell them, you know, what they did wasn't right or something like that. But I mean, you know, accompany that with, you know, some some love and affection. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the deal. Two things. And then I'll pass it on. You know, I hear a lot of these parents, you know, you know talking about, oh, you're not supposed to be doing that in front of. You're not supposed to be kissing in front of uh, your parents and stuff like that. But I just wonder, when was the last time you showed your child some affection? That's what I want to know. And, and I think that a lot of people like to judge families that are different than them instead of going back home and say, hey, man, you know, I'm going to pour this love into my child. You know what I'm saying? And it's like if children are getting love inside the family, they're more likely to get it outside. You know what I'm saying? So if, you know, if, if, if you if you feel like you don't want your child to be going out and having all these experiences with partners and stuff like that, then make sure you, you, their their cup is you know is 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 filled. Like at least you're doing your part. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen way too many students growing up in the school. They're not getting love from their parents. Either they're not there or they're there, but they're just not giving it. Are they saying, "Oh, I love you," but they're you know laying hands on them? I'm doing this because I love you, and therefore they find refuge. You know what I'm saying? In a significant other. And they tell them things that their parent that they don't tell their parents because they don't feel safe around their parents. You know what I'm saying? So show you show you show your show your children some affection and nurturing, you know what I'm saying? Um, before someone else does. <laughs> what you think, uh precious in uh divinity? I think I think honestly, I said y'all hit it dead on the nail, and that's basically what I was thinking the whole time, the whole time. 
many many parents need to grow up and cut the shit. A lot of y'all did it <laughs> for real. Y'all didn't cut the shit. Y'all did a lot of these things that these kids have done. You have done <laughs> the same thing. And if you don't like what was done or you felt there was something wrong with how you did it back then, instead of trying to shame them by it, tell them, look, I did this as a kid and this is why I don't think it's best for you. And then find other alternatives right there, like that. Don't sit there and try to shame them or to punish them. Because you're right, Lottie. What you going to do if they do do it? What you going to do? Make it mad, but what you finna do? Yeah. Cause you can't hit the kid today. You finna go to jail today compared to back then. You finna go to jail. So what are you about to do about it? So I think you definitely need to have a conversation with your kids and also give them an example of what affection look like too. What you or what's your example of affection? If it's not hugging or kissing, then what is your affection? Some people look at affection as cooking your favorite meal or bringing your favorite snack. I like snacks. So bring me a snack. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I like snacks. <laughs> I like a good snack. I like a good snack. Okay, I'm a food. I, I like a good snack. I like snacks. Bring me a snack. Bring me a bowl of cereal. I'm real happy about that. But, 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 yeah, but yeah, but parents, yeah, grow up, except that your child is growing up and they're developing into adults that they're going to have experiences with love and sex they're becoming an adult it's not it's not stop making a taboo is basically what i'm trying to say it's not not it's 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 perfectly human nature it's normal not so to be taboo and that's all i got that's all i can say about that grow up what, what you what you think divinity what's your what's your plan of action my plan of action is to take us back to a day when children were off limits, including, but not limited to, trans children. Because we have come to a day where people just feel free to say what the fuck they want to say about anybody's child on the internet. And this baby is just living her truth. And it just, I just will never, for, like, the people who have interjected themselves and and made um disingenuous arguments or created disingenuous uh debates about this young lady like this is I, like i will never forgive this like i just will never forget it i will never forgive it I, this will be for uh the cis hetero community, what the, the Central Park Five are for Trump for me, because I just don't understand the pervasive, like nobody's pushing back on it. Nobody's saying, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe, as a matter of fact, I did in a, a, a well-known blogger talked about my appearance, blocked me, and then made a whole video about Help me. He made a live about help me because I asked him not to misgender the young trans man in the in the picture. That's all I asked. And so, yeah, I, I'm just going to. My plan of action is to stay the course. He needs to grow up. And. and I'm going to be the constant voice of grow up because I don't have I don't have compassion for this this line of questioning. I don't have empathy for it. I don't I schemed we're asking to hold yeah. and but yeah, so I, I just yeah, I want us to get back to not talking about kids because that used to be a thing. Yep. All right, it's C Talk. We winding down. We're about to get out of here. I want to remind y'all, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have a grill party experience. It's going to be on all my channels, uh, Logic I Man TV, Logic I Man. It's going to be on the grill party uh, channel on Facebook, all three of my channels on Facebook. It's also going to be on YouTube. You can check it out uh, live at Life Enrichment Bookstore in Seattle, Washington. 
Um, so at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, it's going to be an open mic f- uh, format. So if you want to get down with that and um, be in the open mic, you got to show up in person, though, in Seattle. You got to be in Seattle to be actually, you know, do it. So show up at, uh, at 4 p.m. or inbox me, and then we can get you on the open mic. So this Saturday, the 23rd, 5 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, Life Enrichment Bookstore, and on YouTube and on my Facebook channel, we're going to have a real party experience, spoken word, story world, storytelling theater. All right. I love all y'all. Thank y'all for taking the time. Y'all could have been anywhere else, but y'all chose to be here. Peace. We out.